Welcome everyone. Welcome back to the second video of the Thermal Fluids 1 module. Um, previously, we left off uh, talking about density. Okay, and we talked about how uh, fluid experiences uh, two different kinds of forces, pressure and shear. And then we also mentioned that pressure forces act in the perpendicular direction to the surface and how shear is acting parallel to the surface. Okay, uh, this uh, we also call the direction as tangential to the surface. Okay, as in perpendicular is normal to the surface, parallel is tangential to the surface. So today we would like to focus more on the shear force and viscosity okay. so this is uh, chapter one section 1 1.3 of the lecture notes okay imagine that uh, you have a layer of fluid okay so this is my fluid it can be oil it can be water okay and there are two surfaces one at the top and the other one below. Okay. One is uh, stationary at the bottom and the top is moving at a speed let's say one meter per second. So the question is how will the fluid in between these two surfaces uh, behave? Okay. First of all we need to say that there is this thing called the no-slip condition it means that the fluid particle that is next to the surface will follow the speed of the surface itself so uh, for this particular particle that is next to the stationary surface right the speed here will be zero okay? whereas for the particle that is actually right next to the moving plate on top the speed will be one Okay, so any anywhere in between the top and the bottom will have a speed between 0 and 1. So let's imagine if yeah, this uh, layer of fluid has a height of h. So how, 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 how can we uh, plot this out if we can draw an axis, okay? Draw a pair of axes. The y axis is your y, is your height. Okay, I better use the small y. And this x axis, we we denote it as the speed u. And this is the bottom surface where y equals to zero. Okay, and at this place u is equals to zero, and u here is equals to one meter per second. Whereas as you go higher and higher, it reaches the top level, which is the H, exactly the same as the thickness of the fluid. Okay, so drawing this, we can actually draw a straight line that is this. Okay, it means that uh, if the fluid particle is at this height the speed of this particle at this height will be this value if the fluid particle is at this height the particle will be have a speed of this value so let's say this is half the height then this one will be 0 0.5 meter per second okay so this particular straight line uh, this straight line okay we call this the velocity profile. This is what you are required to know. Okay, the question may ask you to draw the velocity profile, and this is what you're supposed to produce this particular straight line. All right. So why is this useful for for us? Okay, because you will realize that uh, you need to calculate for the shear and the shear equation is tau is equals to mu 
du by dy. What does this mean? This is the shear stress. The unit is in Pascals, okay, or force per newton meter, no, newton per meter square. This is what we call the dynamic viscosity. This is the property of the fluid. This Greek letter mu is the property of the fluid. It indicates the how much resistance is the fluid to movement. So, for example, between oil and water, oil should have a higher viscosity. Uh, than water. Okay, the most extreme example I can give you is the tomato ketchup. Okay, uh, it will be more, be much more viscous, viscous than water. It will resist. Okay, so naturally, if the fluid itself resists to its, uh, resist more to motion, you will of course need a higher. Uh, you will ex, ex, of course experience a higher shear stress. Okay, on the surface of the, of the solid surface. And lastly, this is actually the velocity gradient of this straight line here. Okay, this is the gradient. How steep is this line? You just put this value inside here. Okay, so let me start with another piece of paper. So the, the same case, huh? U, Y. Okay, at the top it is H. This is zero, this is zero, and the top plate is moving at one meter per second. So my velocity profile is this line. So your stress is mu du by dui. Let's say that uh, this fluid is water. Okay, and if you go and search for internet, Google for the value of dynamic viscosity, you will get a value that is about 0 0.001 pascal seconds okay so what you do is you take this value here and you put it here mu okay 0 0.001 how do you calculate for the velocity gradient you can go from du by dy into delta u by delta y which means the change in u over the change in y okay change be between what let for uh, let's say at the bottom plate, right? This is the bottom plate. We call this point one. Okay, the top plate, the top surface is point two. So what we really want is u two minus u one over y two minus y one. Okay. So what is U2? U2 is the velocity at the top, which is 1. U1 is the velocity at the bottom, the speed at the bottom, which is 0. Okay? Y2. Y2 is the height at point 2, which is H. Because Y1 at the bottom, you call it 0. So this is how, well, this is how you solve it. And... Uh, then you will get your value in terms of Pascals. Okay, let's say for example h is 0 0.005 meters, which is actually 5 mm. Uh, what will you get? 0 0.005. Okay, you will get 0 0.2 Pascals. So this is your shear stress, right? And uh, sometimes you'll be required to find the shear force. Shear force. Okay, it is basically the shear stress multiplied by the area of which this force is experiencing. Okay, how much force is it applied on a certain area? Okay, for example, if the area is one meter second, uh, one meter square, your shear stress, your shear force will be zero point two times one. Okay, 0 0.2 newtons. This is your shear force applied on one meter square of area. All right. Now, uh, one thing you need to note. Okay, it is very common that we just define that the bottom surface is stationary and the top surface is moving at a certain speed. But things can happen 
such that I might have two moving surface. Okay. Maybe the top is going at two meter per second. Okay, and the bottom is going at one meter per second. There will still be a difference in speed. Okay? And there will still be shear stress. And what you do is that you plot this curve, velocity profile, instead of zero, right? You should be you should be plotting the curve like this. Okay? Between one meter per second to two meter per second. So this is how you should draw the curve. And if it is moving at an opposite direction of minus one meter per second, then your curve eh? yeah. So this is two, this is minus one. Forget about this. So at H it is at two, right? But at zero, bottom it is at minus one. So your line velocity profile becomes this. All right. Uh, then you just calculate the gradient. Uh. So let's say this uh, the velocity gradient of this will be what? Same ah, uh, u two minus u one over y two minus y one. So my u two is two, but my u one is minus one because it's going the other way. Okay, and the same y two is h. Y1 is 0. So you get this value. 3 over H. Okay. So this is the velocity gradient of this particular curve. So this is how you calculate. Um, there are two other things that I'd like to mention here. This video may be, may be a bit long now. Please bear with me. Okay. Where does the shear stress act on? Okay. Although this plate is moving. Okay. The the shear stress, the, the fluid is moving this way, so the shear stress on the plate. See, uh, the plate is not moving, but the fluid is moving this way. So the, the shear stress acting on the plate should be in this direction, right? But if you imagine yourself to be the fluid, so now you are the fluid, you are moving, but the plate is not, so you are being dragged by the fluid. Okay, so for the fluid, right, the shear stress uh, is actually this direction. Can you see that? Okay, this is for the bottom plate, the top plate. This is the fluid. If I'm the fluid, I'm driven by the top surface. My shear stress, the fluid shear stress, okay, caused by the top plate is this direction. But for the top plate, right, imagine you are the top plate. You are being dragged by the fluid. So the shear stress by the fluid on the top plate is actually this direction. Okay. Incidentally, the stress values are all the same. Because why? Because your viscosity does not change. Your gradient also does not change. So this value is always the same. Just that it, they act in different directions depending on where you look at it. And last but not least, um, sometimes you'll be given, instead of dynamic viscosity, you'll be given kinematic viscosity. Okay. In fact, they are related. So kinematic viscosity, okay. Yeah, sorry. So dynamic viscosity is actually density multiplied by kinematic viscosity. Okay. So what you do if you are given the kinematic viscosity, you just need to find the density of the fluid, multiply them together to get this dynamic viscosity, and you can put it in this equation. Alright.